in this final um, video of this of the module, I want to uh, take a moment to introduce two very important tags that will play a, a role in the presentation layer of uh, of web design, and uh, and then go back and review and and hit on some of the tags that we haven't touched on at all, just to say, hey, there's some things out there that you may run into later on. Um, just as a reminder, HTML forms our, our kind of foundation. Um, in fact, down at this foundation, there's probably some PHP that might layer even underneath this and kind of help to inform it. But basically, HTML is the foundation. Um, then on top of that, we're going to layer other files. We're going to layer, for example, um, uh, a style sheet above that and maybe some other things too, like JavaScript. So uh, in order to do that, we have to have ways of hooking down from the, the style sheet down to the HTML file. I mean, at a very basic level, we need a way to link the two files together, right? And we'll, we'll talk very briefly about that now and more when we talk about style sheets. But we also need to be able to have names for the things in the, um, in the HTML file so that we know how to hook into them. And so we're going to introduce two new tags, div and span. And we're going to talk a little bit about ID and class attributes, ways of labeling things on the sheet, uh, on the page. OK, so let's take a quick look at our file. You'll note that we have a whole bunch of H2s here, um, heading 2s. Now, in this case, we might want to say, for example, that our first heading is a little bit different than the other headings. Um, and we might say that it is, for example, of a different class. All this does is says that this makes no change to what um, shows up on the front page. Uh, you know, when you actually render it in a browser, it has absolutely no effect at all. But it does allow us to identify this particular H2 tag later on, or, or H2 tags of this type, um, so that when we do a style sheet later on, we can say, we want to change the headings, but we only want to change the first time that an H2 heading is used. And this way, we've managed to identify this as the first time that the heading is used. We might also want to say that there's only one of a particular type of, of heading in there, or a particular type of paragraph. This is, for example, my thanks paragraph. So I might want to just identify it as that. So the difference between the class and the ID, and this is something that people get confused on a lot, is that class can be used many times. This first one's probably a bad example. We could do a class called regular. So this is like a regular paragraph. I don't know why you would identify it as that. You'd probably assume that a paragraph with no class is a regular paragraph. But So we can have lots of, of paragraphs with the class being regular, for example. Um, and we could, we could actually have lots of them with the first one, unfortunately. Um, I know that logically doesn't make sense, but because it's a class, we can have one or we can have more than one. Uh, IDs you can only use once, so this can be the only thanks paragraph tag on the entire page. Um, frankly, IDs are probably used more often, and I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, but that's the difference between ID and class. It's important to uh, notice that they're not interchangeable, that, that they, they are different. So what happens when you have a section of the page that you want to identify, but it's not, it doesn't have tags around it already? I mean, for example, let's say that we didn't want to have the My Address um, subheading, but we wanted all of this to be part of the footer. Well, it would be really nice if you had a tag that was just footer. Oops. Um, and in fact, in HTML5, you do have a footer tag, but there's a reason it's not being colored blue here. And that reason is that it's a non-standard tag. It's still still not a lot of browsers know what to do with that. And so we're safer avoiding using the footer tag for now. But we do have the ability to make our own tags um, using what's called div or division. So there's the beginning of the tag. There's the end of the tag. Now div does absolutely nothing to, again, the way things are displayed. So um, if we uh, open this up in a browser, You'll see it, we haven't had any, we took out the heading, but we did that physically. There's no effect of that div. All it does is says, okay, we've got a section here, and there it is. That's all it does, is it's a way of, of setting up a division, a section. Um, now, of course, in order to do anything with that, we need to um, give it some handle, some way of 
making sense of it. And here is how we make that into a, a footer div. So divs are like a make it yourself kind of a tag. It's like if you if you have a tag and you wanted to invent it in XML, which we're not going to deal with at all in this course, you actually can make your own tags. In HTML and XHTML, you can't make your own tags just by putting them in round brackets. But you can make your own tags by using the div tag. It's like in um, Scrabble, it's like a, a wire, wild card tag. So you can make it be whatever you want. You just say, this is my tag. I want to enclose all the things in this section. And I'm going to name the tag footer. This this will become, right now it might feel a little hazy, but it will become much clearer as we move to, into CSS. This is the way you, for example, identify what you want to end up on a right sidebar. You might have a section called right sidebar. In fact, we might want the more information section to actually be in a right sidebar. So we do a div. So now we've said we're, we, we want this to be in the right sidebar. Now, when we look at it uh, in a browser, will it be in the right sidebar? No because none of this actually makes changes to the presentation layer. But it, later on, when we get to CSS, we'll be able to say, OK, take that chunk that I labeled right side and put it on the right side. So it's a way of identifying pieces. Uh, div's cousin is, is something called span. And here we need to touch on the idea between of the difference between inline and block modules. So remember that we said we can nest things inside of each other. For example, way up here at the top, when we said you know, we could use the Q to nest things inside each other, or the M to nest things inside each other. M's and Q's can go inside of a P, because a P is a block, and an M is an inline. You can put inline things within blocks. Uh, you can put blocks within blocks to a certain extent, but you cannot put uh, blocks inside of inlines. So, for example, I can't do I whoops paragraph I want it all emphasized. So I can't do that. It'll work, but I can't I shouldn't do that, I should say. Likewise, I shouldn't do this if I can avoid it. Don't worry too much about all this for now. Um, just note that we can do spans. And by default, spans will act more like inline elements, and you can use them more like inline elements. Um, if, the, if the issues between inline and block are a problem, don't worry about it for now. Uh, just note that there is a difference between span and ID, uh, span and, and uh, div. Um, and if you can, it's good to use the appropriate one. You can make them behave very similar to one another through CSS and the way they're displayed, but um, but in terms of kind of the organization and what goes inside of what, it's good to, to keep that separation.